Hi there guys, welcome to week six of uh, 3D modeling for VFX. Uh, in this video, a couple of videos maybe, we're going to take a look at uh, something that's quite important when it comes to producing your final renders, and that is understanding color spaces. I know you guys have touched upon it in the first year, but I think now's a good time just to have a little bit of a recap uh, and just make sure that we are kind of fully uh, aware of, of what's going on when we Im ingest all these different um, assets from various places. So we're going to take a look at ACES, uh, the Academy Color Encoding System, which is uh, which is the de facto standard in um, in modern CGI and VFX. So we need to understand how to work with it, and all of our uh, uh, Houdini installs in all the labs are configured to work with ACES by default. So we need to understand what we mean when we say using ACES, all right? So we're going to introduce it as a color standards ACES. Uh, we'll understand how to manage our input assets and process them accordingly. Now at this stage, the majority of our input assets are going to be texture maps. Uh, where we source them is kind of numerous places, isn't it? It could be freetextures.com, it could be Quixel Bridge, it could be Google Images, it could be a camera, your own photographic uh, camera, um, it could be from a, a video camera, tons and tons of places we can get the uh, the content from. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a Houdini digital asset that will automate the process of converting these assets into an ACES compatible color space, okay? So what is ACES? Um, it's an attempt to standardize the way that color is encoded from initial capture uh, from a camera all the way to final delivery. So whether that's on HD TV or uh, a tablet or an IMAX cinema screen or a cinema or you know um, a monitor screen. So it's an attempt to standardize that because obviously the, the amount of input devices that we've got, DSLR, uh, movie cameras, film, uh, cameras that are still analog cameras. Um, so it's an attempt to standardize that into one format. And using maths, that captured imagery can be transformed to fit within the ACES color spectrum or gamut. You might have heard this word gamut before. And then a similar mathematical transform is then applied to match the desired output. So whatever your project is to be delivered to, and again, in the majority of our cases, it'll be computer monitors or maybe a TV screen. Um, but obviously in production, that might be to, you know, a cinema screen, for example. And as we mentioned, ACES is very quickly becoming the standard method for managing color. And it's like the de facto standard now. So our version of Houdini is configured to work with ACES by default. And in the corrections tab, of Houdini, you'll see that it's got ACES, meaning that it's working within the ACES color space. Okay. So how does that affect you? You know, we've got a couple of projects this year coming up that require you to submit some pretty images. When using all your uh, external assets, which chances are we are, we need to be able to confidently identify their color space. All right. And transform it or convert it to ACES CG where necessary. All right. And then we can configure our viewports within Houdini to view the content in our preferred output transform. So in this example, we're looking at sRGB, which is your, your standard ye olde, old fashioned color space for computer monitors, all right, sRGB. Um, alternatively, you could use Rec. 709, which is quite a common output transform for HD TVs. Rec 2020 is for ultra high definition HDR, um, but you'd need the equipment to view that, wouldn't you? You'd need something really fancy to be able to see this color gamut in all its glory. Something like this, the Asus ProArt, what I found online, um, 32 inch 4K HDR, um, and you might not be able to see it, but in this section here, it says it is compliant with Rec 2020 and a bunch of other color transforms as well. Um, so Adobe RGB and sRGB. So this is saying this monitor can handle lots and lots of very wide color gamuts. All yours for 4,500. Um, so I wouldn't recommend going for a triple monitor setup if, uh, you know, if you've got your eye on one of these. 
Um, but there you go. So something like that in a proper production house is obviously a valid investment. Um, maybe not for us who are just going to output to uh, standard sRGB. And beyond that, here you can see the list. It is tons of output transforms. So this is what we are, almost our delivery platform. We are telling the viewport to display it within that output transform. Uh, and as mentioned, because we're working in sRGB, chances are we want to leave it on sRGB or Rec. 709. They're very similar. Um, I recommend you try both and see, uh, see if you can identify what differences those output transforms have. And the way that ACES is designed uh, by the sort of really clever color theorists and mathematicians um, is that it's designed to be future proof. So any futuristic dis uh, design that we've uh, yet to come up with, the mathematics behind it uh, will allow that to fit neatly into this system and uh, yeah, be future proofed. So why use it is another sort of good question. Why bother with it? Um, it's a much broader color spectrum. So here we can see all the colors in the spectrum sort of flattened out from three dimensions onto this two dimensional grid here. So we've got all the bright colors and then all the obviously the, the, the RGB as you would as you would imagine. And if we look at this, this is sRGB. This is the sort of color gamut that we can expect to see on our computer monitor. All right. Fits all the colors fit within this neat little triangle. And as you can see, if we convert our images to ACES CG, we're working within a much broader color scheme. Okay, so that enables a much broader range of value um, across the colors. Okay, and it really, really shows when, um, especially at high exposure values. Just and this is an image I got from a really, uh, really excellent blog on ACES, which I've got a link to. Uh, I recommend you read it. And so the colors appear more rea realistic, especially at high exposure values. So, um, yeah, so this allows us to fill our scenes with more light without overexposing or, or washing out unnaturally. Here's a bit of a close up. And here you can see standard sort of linear sRGB kind of workflow. Everything looks fine. You know, the sh nice soft shadows and it's well lit. Um, but if you take a look at the colors here, they look very, very saturated. Uh, there's no information in there. It's kind of bottomed out, hasn't it? Kind of green or red. Here on this side, you can see it, the, the, the colors have been converted to ACES CG and it's displayed within sRGB. And again, the images look very, very similar, but we've got more information going on on these colored panels at the side. You know, we can make out, even you can make out some of the reflection of, of this floor panel. Um, I don't know if it's coming through on video, but uh, hopefully if you get a closer look in the presentation, you'll be able to see just how much more information there is in those colored panels across there. So that's the benefit of using it. There's, you, you will notice an improvement in your uh, quality of renders. So um, we'll skip past this task, so I'll get you to do that in class. So the first thing, first question that everybody will always ask is, why does everything look so dark? Um, this is to do with the content that you bring into Houdini. Uh, so Houdini is fixed to the ACES color gamut now, okay? So green is not necessarily always going to be green um, if you've got the wrong input transform. All right, so what does an input transform mean? Um, so, oh, oh, another thing, um, Houdini could be attempting to linearize nonlinear images, but we'll come back to that in a second. Um, so, let's take a look at this image. This is the same texture map, okay, just split into two. Uh, so, this side, we're looking at it in uh, a program called PureF, which I'm sure you're familiar with, okay? Uh, this doesn't have any color management, so this doesn't support the ACES color, uh, color space. So this is just normal Windows, sRGB, um, PureF. Okay, so this JPEG has been downloaded from the internet. Displayed in PureF looks absolutely fine. No different to how it looked in Internet Explorer. When I import that very same JPEG into Houdini, Houdini is using ACES, okay, displaying output sRGB. And you can see it's reading it in incorrectly in that it's way too dark 
it's way, way, way too oversaturated. It reminds me of those, I'm probably showing my age, but those deep fried memes that you used to get on Reddit a few years ago where the color saturation was cranked way up and everything looked horrible. So this is a telltale sign straight away that you need to fix the input image. And that's what our digital asset is going to do. It's going to automatically do that for us, all right? So we need to know a little bit about what these different types of um, file format are doing, all right? Because there's a variety out there. You know, we've got JPEG, PNG, TIFF, Targa, EXR, you know, all are there for a reason. They're not all exactly the same. They all do things slightly, slightly different. JPEG is as old as I am, probably older. Um, there's no reason we should be using JPEG. I, I put this up to sort of identify a worst case scenario. Um, but JPEG does all manner of different color tweaks and correcting when you hit save on a JPEG. So it does all kind of curves and color management, which we just don't need to do um, now. And, and it was, JPEG is really good at making tiny files, okay? That's, that's kind of its only benefit nowadays. We need to stay away from JPEG. Uh, they're, they're just so out of date now. So if we rendered this image from Houdini, we'd be constantly battling, wouldn't we, with the lights and exposure and wondering why everything just looks so dark and gloomy. And then you'd kind of crank the lights up and then everything would be sort of overexposed and you would, you'd be kind of constantly struggling with it. So this is why we need to be aware of what our input textures are doing and making sure that they're in the right color space when we come to render. So fortunately, Houdini's got a bunch of tools, a bunch of color management tools called IDTs or Input Device Transform. So we can take an input device, in this case, our JPEG image, and we can apply that mathematical transform to it to, to place it within the ACES CG color space, all right? So now you can see we're looking much, much closer. We've lost that horrible dark saturated color and we're getting much closer to the actual JPEG. Now, this side, we're looking at Rec 709, which is the output transform for HD TV. So I just wanted to put that side by side with the uh, sRGB so you could see how similar they are. They're practically, you know, this one's probably a little bit less... Uh, Probably a little, I don't know, a bit less saturated maybe. But yeah, the, the two are very, very similar. So I just wanted to put them side by side so you can see. So this is pure F, uh, Windows, um, just standard, no color management at all. And now this is this Ivy JPEG converted to the ACES color space. What we'd want to do now is we want to export this as a new file that's been converted to the ACES space, okay? And these are the tools that we're gonna use. So there's a node in Houdini called OCIO, Open Color Input Output Transform, which is allow, allows us to take an input. So here we're looking at an SRB, sRGB texture and then convert it to whatever color space we need. In our case, ACES CG, all right? And what we're going to do in the next video is just bundle this up into a single tool so that we can, wherever we need to, you know, if we need to quickly convert um, a texture map from you know something we've got from the internet or downloaded we can run it through this digital asset and then plug the converted version into our system knowing that we're not going to have those issues of it being too dark or oversaturated all right and ultimately what i want you guys to do is just be aware just use your eyes um, so if you import a texture map um, from you know from Quixel Bridge for example um, we'll take a look at this as we move forward but if just use your eyes if looking at it it looks wrong in that it looks totally different to what you expected chances are it's using the incorrect input transform and you will need to change it into ACES to make sure it fits into our pipeline all right, and I find the Houdini Cop networks are very useful for this, just for testing. Because what you can do is you can load in, uh, you can load in the image, process it a little bit, and then run them side by side to to get a real sense of what's going on with your texture maps. All right. All right. So in class here, we're going to do a little demo using Cops, linear and non-linear. We will talk about that another time. Um, so one. Final thing I want to give you another example of what to look out for. So this is some uh, bark texture from uh, Quixel Bridge. 
Okay. And looking at it in Houdini, it, again, we're going back to those deep fried memes or whatever it was. Sorry, showing my age. Um, but can you see how saturated this is and how how the greens are a really sickly green and everything, the browns here, I've got this weird orange color. To me, because I've spent a lot of time looking at these images, they just look wrong. So I need you guys to sort of get into the habit of really analyzing these and thinking, this doesn't look right because this is the one that's converted to aces. And notice how much more desaturated the colors are and much more natural they look. Okay, so just use your eyes when it comes to this and just ask yourself that question, does it need converting uh, to aces before you move on? All right, so let's make a, a tool in Houdini to automate this process. And also don't forget in this presentation, there's some really useful links that I want you guys to read through to really understand what we're talking about. All right, then with that, uh, we're gonna jump into Houdini and make this tool. Thanks for watching.